to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Kickstart that engine and roll thunder with the pack. Explore the grittiness of masculine spirituality. Gain traction in the virtues. And soup up your spiritual engine by turning adversity into adventure. Now, here's Bear Wozniak. Let's ride. Aloha and welcome to Waikiki Beach. Welcome to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. I'm your adventure guide, Bear Wozniak. I went down and did my morning Ocean Sunrise Catechism today. You know, you can follow that. If you go to the Bear Wozniak Deep Adventure fan page on Facebook, you can uh, join me wherever I am around the world, around 7 or 7.30 in the morning bear time. That means wherever I happen to be at that time in the morning. And usually there, it involves a sunrise over an, over an ocean someplace. If not, it might be it may, maybe over the the uh, the hills of Rome, or 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 maybe somewhere in Greece as we go on our pilgrimages. But uh, I went down to the the beach today, and no waves. But we're gonna go up and stand up paddle surf after we get done here. We're gonna do this radio show, and then I'm working with Shot Film Productions to finalize the final season of season two, sending it off to EWTN. So exciting things are happening today. Uh, but you know, I w yesterday we had a great day. I got to meet with a friend of mine, Clyde Icow. Any surfer in the world knows the saying, Eddie would go. There's a, a major surf contest, uh, here in o Oahu. That's only held when the surf is about 40 foot faces or bigger, uh, and, and in good conditions. So it's only held about every four or five years. The, you can only surf in it if you're invited and people, the invitees come from around the world during that holding period, which lasts several months. And they may compete in other contests, but they're waiting for the Eddie to go. Why does it say Eddie would go? Because on one of the big, on the second contest, the waves are so big and out of control that they were just a wall. You couldn't drop in them on just a wall of exploding water. As it began to uh, ebb a little bit, but still totally huge and out of control, they asked the different competitors, do you want to paddle out? Do you want to paddle out? One by one, they all started saying Eddie would go. Eddie is Clyde Icow's brother. They were the, ter the, the two uh, first North Shore lifeguards. They never lost a soul at Waimea Bay where they were lifeguards. And I write about Eddie in my last book, Deep Adventure, The Way of Heroic Virtue, because on the second voyage of the Hokulea out in the open channel be the, between the island of Molokai and Oahu, it began to break up in heavy seas in the middle of the night. And because they were navigating the ancient Polynesian way and they had no radio because they were committed to doing it in the ancient way, uh, they were not able to get help. Finally, Eddie jumped on his surfboard and paddled uh, to get help in the middle of the night in the most one of the most treacherous channels in the world, Kiave Channel. I paddled that on a very treacherous day myself, made the 30-mile crossing on my tandem surfboard, paddling from my home in Molokai to my home in Oahu. And I know how treacherous could be, but that night was extremely treacherous. And when he drove on that surfboard, he disappeared within a few moments paddling, and we never saw Eddie again. And so Eddie Aikau and Clyde Aikau are legendary for their willing to lay down their lives for people. Eddie, uh, Clyde Aikau still works <clears throat> with the, uh, the at-risk uh, youth here, helping them get in jobs and get training and get to school. And we just really love him. Uncle Clyde, as he's called now, because he's one of the two main legends here on the island and older, a little bit older than me even. Two years ago, he dropped in on a 45-foot wave at the Eddie Aikau contest. He shattered his shoulder um, eight Eight pins were required to take care of him. But on the very first wave, on a, on a day, on a wave when all of the jet skis out there uh, gunned it for the beach and roll, ro uh, just shot right up onto the sand, right into the crowd to get away from, to, to save the people that they were with. They had their photographers and stuff on the back of their jet skis with them uh, to avoid this huge wave. Uh, and, uh, but it, but it took, uh, it took Clyde on the head and, uh, and you, so he had a whole hour session. He came in four hours later. He paddled out with a destroyed shoulder because he knew, I think he was, he's, he's 68 or 70. He's about, he's pushing his last days as, to compete in that contest. And he wanted to catch one more wave for his bro brother, Eddie. And uh, you see him in the very end of that heat dropping into this monster wave and him paddling in. And then he went straight to the hospital and they, they put him back together. So we had a good our conversation yesterday morning. And then I saw him again on the, I uh, came over to my house yesterday morning. Then I saw him on the beach riding his bicycle by us the, the, a few hours later. And then last night we were at big wave Dave's open house for his, for his new uh, surf shop slash coffee shop. P 
beautiful, unbelievably meticulously designed and conceived place with all with so many of our friends showed up. And there's Clyde Eichau. Uncle Clyde is there again. And he said, I said, well, you got some wisdom for us. He goes, yeah, tell everybody, stop thinking so much about yourself and you give to others. You just be there for others. So great message from Clyde. But my wife, Cindy, said, you know, Hawaii is unique. The men here have community with each other. The men here watch out for each other. And it's not just the old men hanging out with the old men, but like Uncle Buffalo, he, you, he, you can go up to Makaha, have coffee with Buffalo on Tuesday mornings. You can just go up there and just hang out with him on Tuesday mornings. Uncle Buff and Clyde Aikau, the two main legends here on the island now. Um, and Cindy was saying the young, the young uh, Groms, the young kids, the young boys, the, the, the teenagers, the young adults, all of them are together. And I think it's because the water brings us together. We, we see, we see each other out on the water. We've maybe rescued each other or helped rescue other people. And, and uh, there's a community of men. There's a tribal sense here in Hawaii that she says she's never seen anywhere else before. We need to bring that tribal sense of community my favorite thing when I speak at a men's conference is to see a father bring a 14 or 15 or 16-year-old son. And the father will come up and the son will kind of be in the background. And I always pull that guy forward and I, I focus on that young man and talk story with that young man and, and challenge him and encourage him in his walk with Jesus. We got to paddle out in the deep together, you men. Uh, we, need to, we need to work to build a community of men again, a tribal sense where all men work together to challenge, to equip, and to mobilize each other in the in the in the, in the, in the uh, art of uh, chivalry and uh, being a knight of virtue. And so that's why we have back with us today, Jerome Richter. He is a, a vice president for public affairs at University of Mary in Bismarck, North Dakota. And uh, we're, uh, we invited him back because uh, he has this thing called Knights of Virtue, where he, uh, where he gathers young, boy, y- young men on, in high school and college campuses uh, to grow together in, in the virtues and to do, and develop community. So he doesn't know that we're going to have an open book test for him on his code of, eth- his code of chivalry that he, he's designed for them. So, Jerome, welcome back to the Bear Wozniak adventure. Bear, it's great to be with you. Greetings from uh, Bismarck, North Dakota, the land of uh, the free and, and the land of bear. Yeah. And hey, tell me about this. Is, isn't Bismarck kind of the tropical part of North Dakota? Yeah, we call it the banana belt. It's the banana belt down there. Uh, how close are you to South Dakota? Like 100 miles or? Uh, not even. I'd say it's probably about 90. We're, oh, 90 miles. Right, yeah, we're in the south central part of uh, North Dakota. Yeah, so you, so, uh, and you could probably see it from there because it's so flat in the, in, <laughs> in the Dakotas. Not, that, that, that's more in the Red River Valley, but uh, uh, there's just enough rolling hills that you got to get to the next one to peek over. I remember the beautiful rolling hills. As a young boy, I was raised in, in Valva, North Dakota, where I was actually kind of raised as a young boy for about ah. four or five years of my life. And, I, and we would go back every summer because my, my family, my dad's family is from Wilton, North Dakota, which is, what, 30 miles from Bismarck or what? Uh, just under 40. Yeah, I always remember Bismarck Bismarck's was Bismarck's growing too so much that <laughs> it's probably in twenty five miles from there. A now. suburb now. Yeah. I just remember when we headed north on uh, eighty three. Most of the roads there were gravel, and I just remember, wow, we got a there's there's a paved road here. This is fancy. Going to the top of the Bismarck Capitol building too. I don't know how tall is that. How tall is that building, or does it still I exist? See. Oh yeah, uh, I think the Capitol building. If you get to the very top, it's nineteen floors. Yeah, and I was just blown away. Oh my gosh, this is. People look like ants down there, you know. It was sure. blew my mind. We're with Jerome. Uh, like I said, like I've said, you know, I've mentioned uh, to you once before. That name means a lot to me because I know if, if Saint Jerome became a saint, that I can too, because he was known for his kind of caustic behavior. He would treat the tourists a little bit harsh when they would come bug him while he was in his man cave translating the Bible there in in Jerusalem. Well, he he had work to get done, and people were trying to take him away from God's work. So that I mean, that justifies throwing rocks at a few people, doesn't it? <laughs> you know, as a CPA, <laughs> when I'm when I'm when I'm really focused on something, and people want to come and ask me one question, it brings me so far out of my thought process, yep. and I have to reconnect with my thoughts. I don't blame him, but he was he was only he was right next to <clears throat> the Holy Sepulchre. You know, he was so close. So, but but there's hope for both of us, right? If if Jerome could become a saint, we can too. Absolutely, hundred percent. And I was listening to. Uh, your lovely description of uh, the f- the tribalism and the faithfulness of the people down there and the camaraderie of the men, especially in the surfing community. And you were talking about Molokai. I've never been to Hawaii or to the islands, but 
there's a deep love and respect for St. Damien mm-hmm. of Molokai <laughs> that, uh, that I've always had. And to, to know that you're down there, uh, that's, oh, my, that's amazing. My dad was a deacon in Molokai. Oh, wow. So he would often go to different, the different churches and he would, he would do what, you know, they didn't have enough priests. <clears throat> so he would, um, I forget what it's called, but he, they would already have the Eucharist um, uh, sanctified. So he would do a homily and he was a wonderful, uh, he was an incredible homilist. Yeah, they and call it a communion service, right? Communion service. Okay. So, <clears throat> and I spent many years in Molokai and I remember one, one day looking across, uh, I had a home there on the west side. And I remember looking across the, uh, the Kiave channel thinking, hey, I could paddle that, which ruined my life then because I had to make that, that paddle on my, surf, on my tandem surfboard. But you are trying to change the subject. I have an open book test <laughs> for you. Uh, when we get back, we're going to start asking you these questions about these different, the different elements of your code of chivalry for this group called the Knights of Virtue. Uh, we'll be right back with more of the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Aloha and welcome back to the Bear Wasnick Adventure. We're with my friend Jerome Richter, Vice President of Public Affairs, University of Mary, the traditional, strongly uh, strong Catholic bastion there in Bismarck, North Dakota. And uh, we're going to be asking him about <clears throat> this group he has started that's for high school and also their college students, two different groups, the Knights of Virtue. And we're going to give him an open book test because he developed this these, these uh, different principles, the code of chivalry. And we're going to go down this list and have you uh, explain each of them. Do you have your number two pencil ready? Uh, I, I do. <laughs> you I should do, always have three or four, you know, just in case. The sharp pencil is always a helpful thing. Okay, I'm going to ask you, first of all, give us the 30-second version of what, or 60-second, what is the Knights of Virtue about? The Knights of Virtue is a group uh, of young men that I started first in high school to help young people to have a little bit of what you were talking about earlier, that, that fraternal community to hold each other accountable and to have something to aim for. What does it mean to be a man? What, what am I striving for? Because as we know, American culture and so much of secular culture is just saying, uh, be self selfish and get while the getting's good and, uh, whatever pleases you and makes you happy, just do it. And they don't know what more there is to it. Yeah, and you look at what's happened now and the, 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 the scandal of people cheating to get their kids into school uh, as, a, as, a, as someone involved in the university system. We need honor. We need chivalry. And uh, so now are you ready for your test? Absolutely. doesn't you, mean I'm going to pass it, but I'm ready. You know, Bears Man Cave, we have a set of, of principles that the men that are a member of the Man Cave, our, face, our secret Facebook group, which is everyone knows about because I always talk about it. But men, you have to go to my website, Deep Adventure, to become a member of it. But we have our little code. Of six items, you have like a, you have a lot more than that. Let's put it that way. Okay, here's the first code: Thou shalt always seek to love and serve the Lord thy God with all your heart, mind, and soul. What does that mean? It means that we're Christian people and that we follow uh, Jesus Christ, who is our Lord and Savior. And this is what He said: Keep it simple, first and foremost. Uh, and so they asked Him, Lord, uh, what do I need to do to? Uh, gain heaven? What do I need to do to uh, gain salvation? And Jesus gives them, there's the the two uh, main things. The first one, to love your Lord, your God, above uh, everything with all your heart, mind, and soul, and strength. And so that's naturally where we put it there, because it's about love, and it's about relationship. And not just with your heart, but with your mind. And that's the beauty of the Catholic Church, man. (laughs) Faith and and reason. Yeah, faith and reason. It's not an intersection of faith and reason. It is uh, if you had a Venn diagram of faith and reason, they'd be overlapped. They go together. Yep. So um, <clears throat> I love this next one. Thou shalt abandon thine own will to the holy and divinely superior will of God. This, I think, Bear, uh, is the most important thing that we need to help young people uh, to understand. And it's, it's hard for us to understand. So don't, uh, don't get me wrong that uh, this isn't preaching to myself first. But young people uh, have a very difficult time, especially in American culture, where surrender is not something that is fostered. Right. To surrender your will, because we're watching too many movies where, you know, the bad guys are out there and the good guys come in and just kick major butt and take charge. And uh, they're as violent as the others and as willful as the others. The example 
and especially during this Easter season, excuse me, that uh, I would like to bring up is Jesus Christ in the garden. There he is in the garden. This doesn't mean blindness. This doesn't mean put your head down. This doesn't mean put your head in the sand. It's, Father, if, if it be possible, let this cup pass. But not my will, but thy will be done. And so it's, it's, first, it's first knowing that I have a relationship with God. I can bring things to him. But ultimately, it is always desiring his will. And I want to go on a little bit of a soapbox here, Bear. I've had some epiphanies during Lent and into this Easter season that I've really thought a lot about the question. I've always thought about this. Why did Judas do what Judas did? Why did he betray Christ? And, and I have something that isn't church teaching. It's a theory, but it seems to make sense to me. And it comes down to this, and I could go on for a half hour about it. It's about willfulness. Judas was willful, and Jesus wouldn't do what he wanted him to yes, do. Yes, yes, exactly. He wouldn't, he wouldn't do what Jesus was supposed to do in his mind. He knew he was the Messiah. He saw him raise the dead. He saw him do all these different things, but he's not going to do what I want him to do, and I'm going to put him between a rock and a hard place, and I'm going to make him do it. So if Jesus is the perfect example of how we uh, serve God's will and we follow God's will, then naturally Judas is again that example. So even in his sin, he's still teaching us and God is using that to teach us. Don't be like this. Don't try to force your will. In my time, in my way, as I see it, will it take place? And we know, Mm -hmm. we know that God's ways are not our ways. And so we have to trust and we have to have that faith. And so it's always about abandoning, uh, surrendering, uh, if you want to use a different word, your will to God's will. You know what it's like? It's, um, and I agree with you. I know looking back at my life, I was, I was walking by the yacht club the other day here with Cindy yesterday, and I go, see that boat? That's the boat I almost, I, I, I wanted to buy um, just before I moved to Hawaii. Hmm. I sold my smaller little Catalina, and I, and I wanted to get a bigger sailboat, and it was available. And, and then I went to go, I went on my long bicycle ride across the United States and came back, and I was going to say, okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try to make that happen. And it was sold. Oh, man, I had plans. And then... Within a few months, I ended up moving to Hawaii. So God, uh, you know, how, when you look back, you realize all the things that you said, oh, I want to do yeah. this, I want to do that, and it didn't happen. Oh, God, why didn't, you, why, didn't you let your, why didn't you let your will be my will? And then you find out later. You know, we have a, <clears throat> our creed at Deep Adventure Ministries is that the most radical, and of course, radox is a word that goes, has as many meanings, the word radical, uh, you know, it means the root of all things. It also, you think of the free radicals in in, uh, in chemistry that can change uh, change things, and then the radicalness of wanting to to just totally give it all. Uh, but our statement is that the most radical thing you can do in life is abandon yourself to the wild adventure of God's will. And I think about my friend Clyde Ikow. I think about my son. He uh, was towed in by my friend uh, Crazy Todd Robertson on a day when no one else was surfing uh, in what the Coast Guard called 100-foot waves. Mm. He towed into a wave that was the biggest wave there was. And uh, once he towed into that wave, he abandoned himself to it, right? There's no, you, there's no, there's no turning around. And the other thing is like when you're, when you're surfing big waves and you're paddling in, into them, you have to paddle with all your might to catch it. Because usually just as the wave is, is rising up, there's an upward rush of wind too because it's causing its own wind. <clears throat> you got to break down, you got to break through the wind and point that nose down and you got to really, really want to abandon yourself to that wave. Men, you want, abandon yourself to the, to the Lord, but do it with all your heart. Paddle with all your heart into that at total abandonment to God's will. Do it in prayer and again and again throughout the day, not my will, but thy will be done. So we love that word abandon. I love that word. <clears throat> and I would only add one thing to that, Bear, because that was very beautiful what you just said, is this. Our small desires and small mindedness are nothing, nothing compared to what the Lord has in store for us and wants for us. And so I'm 100% with you. If I would have tried to plan out my life, it would have been as whole hum and boring as you can imagine. But abandoning your will, uh, giving, giving the Lord, and here's one of my favorite words, giving the Lord the permission to do whatever he wants with me has made my life 
very exciting to the point of, and I think we talked about this last time a little bit, I've had the chance to travel to Rome taking uh, nearly 2,000 people now on pilgrimage to Rome. How many did you bring back, though? (laughs) <laughs> I, I, I've only I've only lo- I've only lost about one point five percent. It's a good percentage rate. <laughs> but no, those but it, those are the things that make life exciting. Is uh, you, you let let him do it and just follow along, and it take, takes a stress out of it. And you know he he made you, he wired you, he gave you your spiritual d- DNA and your physical, you know, all of that stuff he put together. He knows what's going to make you happy. But mm-hmm. seeking God is, is is seeking God and His will. You know, you have a you're, you're made for a purpose. It's not like you're a baseball bat meant to be a hitting a golf ball. You know, you're a baseball bat. God made you that way. Abandon yourself to His will, and be, you'll be shocked. It's not a boring. It, it's so thrilling when you're in God's will because, oh, there's this brick wall in front of me. How am I gonna? How am I? Wait a minute. How's God gonna deal with this? And then you walk towards it, and you walk towards it, and the and and the brick wall just disappears. Uh, it, it being in God's will. There's also that statement of you, of like of, of Job, God, what are you doing wrong? <laughs> you know, <laughs> even in the hardships, God has God God has His will. We're talking with Jerome Richter. He's been I, I gave him two. This is an open book test for him, the code of chival- chivalry, which he's developed for his Knights of Virtue. He's making his answers really really long because he doesn't want me to ask him all the <laughs> other ones. <clears throat> I mean, this is his his first pop quiz you've taken in how long? Wow, I've been the teacher for quite some time. Yeah, so how, it, how does it feel? It, how does it feel? It, well, it's it's all going to depend on how this plays out. <laughs> the tables have turned. Score. We'll be right back with more of the Bear Wozniak adventure. Aloha and welcome to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Hey, everybody. We need to invite you to go to our website, deepadventure.com. We've got a brand new website. John Flynn of Kickstarter Media put it together for us. It's incredible. Uh, it gives you access to so many different avenues of our ministry, access in a way that allows you to be or provides you with the power to be part of the ministry, too. And so we'd love for you to go visit our website, deepadventure.com, and invite you, please, to become a Patreon donor with us. Anyone that gives a monthly uh, pledge uh, commitment during the summer. We'll get a free copy of my book, Deep Adventure, The Way of Heroic Virtue. So go to our website, deepadventure.com, and and become part of the Mug Club if you want, or you if you're a Knights on Bikes member, you there's a special uh, er- area there for you. Um, if you want to join Bear's Man Cave, uh, for men only, the secret Facebook group. You can only join by going to the website. Don't bother trying to, to do it on Facebook. And uh, you'll become part of our pack, and you can ride with us and become part of our ministry. Okay, so we're with Jerome Richter. He is the uh, Vice President of Public Affairs at the University of Mary. He started a group called Knights of Virtue many years ago in a high school, and now it's in, in the university there too. And he has this code of chivalry that he asks the men to follow. So I'm giving him an open book test on this, on this these list of codes that he's created. If you're watching us on YouTube, by the way, we really do a lot of extra work to make sure you can video – Watch us instead of just hit listen to us on, on EWTN radio or, or listen to us on podcast. You can actually watch us. Go to our website, deepadventure.com, and click on the Bear Wozniak Adventure. You'll find out how you can view it. All right. Question number three. Thou shalt always seek a greater union to God, which I think is an interesting statement, but then what you add is really powerful. In his holy trinity, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. What, what, what is, why did you emphasize Union to God in His Holy Trinity. Back in college, and uh, to save some money, my junior and senior year, I moved out and lived in a basement with uh, three other good, God fearing men. And uh, the place that we lived in was the basement of a house that we lovingly called the Hole. <laughs> It was it was literally uh, a dungeony type of uh, feel because you went down inside of it, but it was a great place for guys to grow up. And one day, one of the gentlemen said, "You know what? We need just to remember that the goal bunch of guys together living in this place they call the hole, and we held each other accountable that it's about getting to heaven. And here's the thing that we forget, Bear, and so many of us forget: what is heaven?" But union with God the Father, God the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Heaven is being with God 
in union with him completely. And that is what every moment of every day we should be seeking is to be in total and constant union. That is why St. Paul tells us we should pray unceasingly. Why? Because you should be in union with God every moment of every day. That doesn't mean that I'm jabbering uh, at the mouth. That simply means that I'm conscious that my whole life is directly ordered to be in union with the Trinity. And if, yeah. if, if I can try to be doing that now, guess what? I'll be ready for heaven. And as one of my brothers, uh, Monsignor Tom, said, he said, if we can't spend time with God now, why do you think, why do you, would you think that we're going to want to be with him? We're talking with Jerome Richter. He is the Vice President of Public Affairs at uh, University of Mary in Bismarck, North Dakota. And we're giving him a pop quiz about, the, about his Knights of Virtue Code of Chivalry. And uh, we're, we're, gonna, we're asking him to see if he can uh, give us good uh, understanding of each, each one of these codes. <clears throat> this is a really cool one. Thou shalt seek to devout th devote thyself to the Mother of God the Holy Mother, the most pure and immaculate Virgin Mary as God's most perfect creature and the example of the perfect follower of Jesus Christ. Well, I, I, th there you go. She's the most perfect follower of Jesus Christ. She is the Blessed Mother. She was given to us as a mother. And uh, as we all know, and we've heard the saying, and it comes from the French, uh, behind every good man is a better woman. And that is what uh, we also need to know in our faith, is that the Blessed Mother is there for us to hold us up. She, was, she will always be as she was in her life, kind of sitting, if you will, on the sidelines, making sure that we're taken care of. And so I've experienced that very deeply in my own wife, that my, my uh, ability to be a man is propped up by Sarah, my wife, and she and encourages me and supports me and gives me that, that confidence because I'm able to be a man, which is to give my life up for her. She then gives me that same ability. And well, that's what the blessed mother has done for the whole church. She's, she's lifting up the church. And, you know, for our Protestant friends that are listening or Catholics that don't quite understand this, Jesus has a mom. Yeah. He didn't have a mom. He has a mom and he that's loves beautiful. her in a very special way. I, I love being with father Don Calloway because he has such a devotion to Mary and such a devotion to his mom. And I love being with him when his mom is around because uh, there is such a, un a, such a unity between those two. And she's running around always helping him. And I remember he's kind of busy. And I, want, I remember going up to her once and saying, do you think maybe you could ask Father Don uh, if I can do this or this, you know? And I realized, wait a minute, that's how I pray to Mary to ask her son, you know, because she has that access, unique access that I don't in that sp very special way. Jesus still has a mom. He, she, it's not just that there's that he had a mom on earth, and it's not just that Mary was important because she was the conduit through what Jesus came through. She raised that boy, and she uh, and yeah, and 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 from the very cross where salvation came forth, he shared his mom with us. Amen. And I he love shared it. his mother with us. We're going to spend a whole show talking about Mary, so let's move to the next subject because. At the foot of the cross, I love it that Mary didn't kneel and wow. weep. She stood and, and stood with him and basically willing him to, to finish his mission. Okay, here's, here's code number five. Ready for the big question? You got your pencil sharpened? Yep. I remember when Doug Keck interviewed me for my, my first book, Deep in the Wave. I hadn't read it in years. <laughs> He'd ask me questions. I go, gee, Doug, that's a great point. What do you mean by that? You know, that, by the way, that's a great thing to answer to professors when they ask you a question. That's a really interesting question. Why would you ask me that? And then hopefully they'll answer it for you. Okay. So here's question. Here's, here's code of ethic, uh, chivalry, Knights of Virtue, code of chivalry, number five. This is a cool one too. Thou shalt, and you use the word shalt, tch, thou shalt believe all the teachings of the Holy Catholic Church in accordance with the Holy Scripture, sacred tradition with a capital T, and the magisterium in union with the Holy Father and the Holy Roman Pontiff. This is what it takes to be a knight of virtue. Why did you put that in there? Well, it not only uh, explains what it means to be uh, a knight of virtue, it also explains what it means to be a faithful Christian and Catholic. Uh, to be Catholic is to be in union with the church. And here's the thing, uh, Bear, and I know that you know this, but uh, I, I just got to say it for myself. This is the great gift of the Roman Catholic Church, is we have 
the Roman pontiff. We have Peter. We have Peter right here on earth. We have the vicar of Christ. And so I taught a uh, world religions class back at the high school. And it was a beautiful class to help people to understand what other people believe and to respect what other people believe. But one of the hard things that was uh, uh, difficult for the students and for myself was to say, okay, tell me exactly what does a, uh, let's say a Lutheran believe? What does a Methodist believe? You what can't does answer a- that because it changes no. every year and everybody has, stands on their own. Yep. Everyone's their own pope in a sense. Exactly. And that is why what we have is a great gift. I didn't say that it's easy, but it's a great, 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 great gift. Because if you want to know what the Roman Catholic Church teaches, guess what? They actually have a magisterium that says that. Now, you can disagree with it if you want. You can fight against it if you want. But at least you can put your finger on and say, here's what the Catholic Church teaches. And that's what it means then to be Catholic. You can reject it if you want. God gives you Yeah, don't say, you know, like (laughs) was it what Fulton Sheen said, uh, if someone says, I'm a Catholic, but he's not uh, a Catholic. Here's here's, uh, one of the quotes from uh, Archbishop Sheen that I love, 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 is he said, many, 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 many people have hated the Catholic Church for what they think it is, but Mm. very few have ever hated the Catholic Church for what it is. Amen. It's a it's a misunderstanding. Right. They they don't understand it. And 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 I just want to add one thing. <clears throat> and I just was making this point to a group of men that I was talking to. Uh, we had a, a men's uh, retreat, and I had a chance to address them. I said, everyone, I I don't appreciate and never will appreciate, and I hope it never changes that if anyone is bad mouthing the Pope, if you come to me. And you're bad mouthing the Pope, and you're criticizing the Pope out of out of a uh, an arrogance or a criticalness, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. not out of charity, but out of arrogance mm-hmm. and a criticalness. I'm offended because that is my Pope, and I'm not saying that every Pope is perfect, but what I'm saying is, he's the Pope, and God ordained him to be that, and he's mine. And to be Catholic is to follow the Pope and to always be like Jesus, saying, "Holy Father, I, I'm." I don't know what you're doing here. Mm-hmm. Maybe, maybe we can get out of this situation, let this cup pass, but not my will, but thy will be done. Mm-hmm. Because that's between the Pope and God then to deal with, not me. Hey Amen. I was reading, I was teaching the Catholic Catechism today, and it was the whole thou shalt not lie section, and talking about uh, truth, and talking about truth in love. And so, and I talked about that. There's a lot of things that, that the Pope is doing, maybe we don't agree with, but maybe you don't really even know what he's doing. You, you, you know, with the social media mob out there, you don't know what, you need to yep. be very careful to yep. get to the truth, to seek the truth, and then be very careful and charitable in your judgment, not to say that we don't have real challenges. This is the Bear Wozniak Adventure. We'll be right back with more. Aloha and welcome back to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. We want to invite you to go to our website, deepadventure.com. My two books, one of them was a bestseller published by Hachette, um, Deep Adventure, the Way of, uh, Deep in the Way of a Surfing Guide to the Soul, and my newest book published by Franciscan Media, Deep Adventure, the Way of Heroic Virtue. You can buy that there. You can buy the, the uh, Warrior Rosaries there. You can buy some of our patches and pins for motorcycles. You can get access to all. Uh, you can actually, if you go to our website, deepadventure.com, and sign up, um, uh, you can actually, at one of the Patreon levels, you can actually get access to the radio show that you're listening to now, months before it airs. And you can also see the, the next episode of, of our Long Ride Home TV show sometimes several months before it airs on EWTN. So go to our website and join up with us and help us out. Okay, so we're talking with Jerome uh, Richter. He is the Vice President of, of uh, Public Affairs for University of Mary, Mary in Bismarck, North Dakota. And he has a group called Knights of Virtue that, uh, is a, that he had started on high school and now the college campus there. And he would help you start your own, too, if you contacted him. Jerome, what's the best place for them to contact you? Oh, wow. Uh, the best thing would be to shoot me an email or to give me a phone call. Uh, 701-355-8072 is my uh, office line. And if you don't get me, you'll get my assistance and we'll get connected. But if you go to our website... Uh, the first one that I would send you to is come to Mary. So it's all strung together. Come to Mary.com. And that'll get you to, uh, if you will, the areas that talk about who we are as the university of Mary, as a faithful Catholic university, or if you go, you marry the letter U and then Mary.edu, 
you'll then get to the university's homepage and then you just got to search for me and you'll find all that other I'll stuff. I'll tell you what, man, if you Google, if you Google University of Mary, the Knights of Virtue, it takes you to a page on their website that, that yep. helps them get in touch with you uh, to help. Come on, man, make this guy do some work. He's got nothing better to do. Help, help, help. Work with him to help start one of these Knights of Virtue things where you are. Uh, <clears throat> we're talking about his, uh, the Knights of Virtue Code of Chivalry, um, and it's an open book test for him. So I'm asking him uh, to explain each of these codes, uh, parts of the codes. The next one is, I like this one, thou shalt fight for true Christian faith. If, you know, most Christians are heretics today, even within the church. Most Catholics are heretics. Most Protestantism is heretics. You know, uh, we, we're just so misinformed about the truth. So tell me what that means. I shall fight. Well, for true here, here's there, there, there's a there's a couple things here, and uh, I just want to tell our listeners, Bear, because uh, I know we're never going to get there. There's 33 different points to the Knights of Virtue Code of Chivalry, and that shouldn't be lost on any of you. Why is there 33? Because uh, I'm too long-winded, but uh, a certain someone lived for 33 years. And so I always wanted to have these little th subtleties for the boys to be able to kind of grab onto. But number six, which we're on, thou shalt fight for the true Christian faith. Right, and so you can see I'm using the old kind of uh, medieval language, shalt, which causes the boys a little bit of a coolness for knights, right? Mm -hmm. But here, here's the here's the point that I would make when we would when we would go over this together. Christianity is not uh, a defensive religion. It's not a a religion that hides. We don't build up walls around ourselves and say, "Uh oh, the bad guys are coming." It's first and foremost an offensive faith, which means we're not afraid of anything. And we're going to go out there and we're going to share what is true. That doesn't mean we bang you over the head with it. But uh, as you so beautifully were speaking about the Blessed Mother, we're not afraid of anybody that's coming at us. We stand there at the foot of the cross. We see what is being done, but we stand in truth. And the biggest thing is, is to make sure that we're always seeking what is true. Not, not this made up puppet Jesus type Amen. of uh, Christianity. And, and, that, and that's so often what people are doing uh, is, is they're making Jesus into who they want him to be. And I think it was G.K. Chesterton that said something like, give me a religion that tells me where I'm wrong, not where I'm right. And he also said things like the Catholic Church is full of hypocrites. And the reason yeah. why is because we, hit, we didn't change our ideal to, suit, to accommodate our failure. We still hold to the <laughs> ideal even though we yeah. fail, right? Yeah, yeah exactly. Mundo. I love GK. Just love GK. Thank you, GK. Uh, he and I are going to enjoy a cigar someday, hopefully in heaven. Oh, By the way, people can go to my website and get my Bears Man Cave Seven Virtue Cigars, too. The sampler said it's awesome, really quality, good, good cigars with each label representing one of the seven virtues. So you have to unpeel it in order to enjoy the cigar. And if you do that, you get an excerpt from my, one of my books on, on the virtues. Yeah, you know. I was walking down the street the other day, kind of a nice part of town, and this gate attacked me. And I was like, oh, I never, I just wasn't prepared for that, you know? You know what I'm, you know what I'm dri driving at there, right? Yep, 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 yep. Well, what's the scripture verse I'm talking about? Which I'm scripture talking about verse? where Jesus said, the gates of hell shall not, shall not prevail oh. against you. Gates don't attack people. We're supposed to attack gates. Sometimes people say, oh, bro, you must, you ever, you, uh, they'll say, you under some sort of spiritual, they'll say, are you under a spiritual attack? Or they'll, they'll mention that word, are you under spiritual attack? And I go, no, I'm on the attack. I, sometimes I just face a little resistance from the enemy. But I remember Warren Carroll's book, dude, you know, his, those seven books he wrote, or six or seven, whatever, the history of Christendom. Love those books. And I was reading one of them, I think somewhere around the 13th century, I don't know when, this one general was known for being cut up everywhere, just all scarred. Uh, but it says that he was only scarred on the front. Hmm. And I went back through and tried to find who was that guy again. I had to reread the, I'll have to reread the whole series of books to find that guy. But um, yeah, he was on the offense. He never turned his back and ran. My friend Archie Kalepa here, head lifeguard on Maui, he goes, I was with him one time and he got a call. Hey, there's a shark. There's a shark. Uh, uh, looks like a shark attack. Where did he get bit in the butt? Yeah. Because he swam and ran. No, you stay, you attack. You're all, you, this doesn't say defend the Christian faith. It says fight for the Christian faith. I love that statement. Powerful. Now, now the, the, the next one, is, uh, uh, as you'll see, 
Uh, Are you says, cheating? Are you reading these these ahead of me? No, I have them memorized. Oh, you got to memorize. Oh, okay. What's the next one? Well, so uh, <laughs> let, let's let's use the sports analogy. Mm. The What's, best the best defense is a good is, offense. Yeah, and, the, but, and yeah, but, but sometimes we're going to fall, and then you do need to defend. And the first thing that you defend against is the attacks. You have to be. And so when when you talked about you were attacked by a gate. I, I, I thought you were leading. I thought you were leading me in you know, a different no, direction. Because no, no. if, you, if you're walking, if you're walking down the street, and all of a sudden out of the blue, a gate, a dog, or somebody attacks you, the number yeah. one, the number one way that they're ever going to get to Bear Wozniak is because he's not attentive. Amen. Right. And, right. and, and my, my point of number seven is that thou shalt always defend the Holy Catholic Church against attacks, which means we know that the Holy Catholic Church is always going to be under attack. We as faithful Catholics or people striving to be faithful Catholics are always going to be under attack because the world doesn't like us just as it didn't like the master. And he told us this, the world will hate you as it hated me first. And so be ready for it. And then this is where we have to be uh, just just ready, uh, vigilant is the word. I had such a beautiful conversation with Stephanie down at the beach yesterday morning. My wife and I went down and she began to uh, ask me the questions, the typical questions about the Catholic Church. And I was so ready with an answer for her, with charitable truth about the different, the different lies you hear about the church. You have to, be, you have, to have a, 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 a as, as Peter said, be able to give a reason you for go. your hope. We need to be able to, but I don't like to use the word under attack. We might be being attacked, but we're not under anything. I remember once someone said, uh, how you doing? The person said, pretty good under the circumstances. Well, what are you doing under there? <laughs> <laughs> you know, remember Peter, Peter sinking a little bit and Jesus lifting him up when he was walking on water. Okay, thou shalt un- unite thyself with the communion of saints in the holy cloud of witnesses. This is your last question because we got to go. But tell me what that, the Knights of Virtue Code of Chivalry number eight. Thou shalt unite thyself with the communion of saints in the holy cloud of witnesses. Well, here's the thing, Bear. You know this and I know this. You cannot unite yourself to something that you don't know. So the first thing is, is you got to come to know your friends. You got to have a relationship with your friends. And so one of the things that the Knights of Virtue would do is every single one of us had to choose, choose a new. It might be the same as your confirmation name. It might be your name, but you had to choose a new, a patron saint. That's so cool. Some young- some young boys would pick a brand spanking new, St. Bruno, St. Uh, uh, Athanasius. There it is. That's it is. mine. That's mine. That, uh, that's there the one go. I chose He's a dude. for myself a few years ago. I dig Athanasius, man. Dig that guy. Yeah. He, he, he's serious. But so the, it's okay point, if I chose to have yeah. an additional best friend. Okay. Yep, yep, yep. And so uh, here, here's what the young men would do then. They would take the name, and then at every meeting, we would open up with a decade of the rosary, and then a litany of the saints, and the litany of the saints was simply going around the room oh. with them, them praying to their patron saint. Well, you know, we got to go, man. Yeah. You took too much time. The test is done. Sign your papers. Bring them to the front of the class. We're talking with Jerome Richter, uh, Vice President of Public Affairs, <clears throat> University of Mary in, Saint, in Bismarck. So now you know we're going to have you back again. Wow, so this is part you. two with Jerome. We still got uh, 24 more to go through, I think. This is the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Go to our website, deepadventure.com, everybody. Until next week, may the breath of the Holy Spirit aloha you. Aloha. You've been listening to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Go to bearwozniak.com to get your free audio and other exciting content. Plus, you can pick up the Long Ride Home 10-episode DVD set, autographed copies of Bear's books, Long Ride Home shirts, tanks, coffee cups, and even motorcycle pins and patches. And find out how guys can sign up for Bear's Man Cave online Facebook group, all at bearwozniak.com. 